Welcome back. This weekend, I'm doing a bit of a lighting upgrade in the shed. If you watch the TikTok series, every day, I'm pretty much in the shed, so probably more than your average bloke. Every day, I've got to come over here. Flick on the main lights up in the roof there, so that's just on a traditional switch. And for the lights you see around underneath the mezzanine floor here, they're actually through one of these Grid Connect power points, so they're wired up. I've got it programmed in the Grid Connect app. Hit the button, lights come on. There's also another little floodlight up there as well. And that's also connected to one of the PowerPoint ones. So with the app, I can set scenes and automation and then flick them on, but I haven't really set it all up yet. So I want to get the other lights on there as well. The floodlights need replacing out the front. They're full of water and dead. It's a bit of an upgrade. I've got these huge peer light ones. I'm going to get a sparky round, wire those in. And that'll make it so I can work outside on the toy hauler at night time or other projects. Should be bright enough. So these are the Grid Connect inline wiring switches that you can program. So I want to get these wired into the inside fluoro lights and then in line with the floodlights outside as well. And then I'm going to play around with the automation and see what they can do. Right, I saw Sparky coming around and give him a hand, knock these up. And I'll see you back when we're good to play with the automation and see what they can do. Okay, so a few hours later, we're back. Wiring is done. My electrician mate didn't want to be on camera. It's all good. A bit more detail about these, you just get them from Bunnings. And the Arlec ones and the Dita ones work together. They're both on the same Grid Connect platform, use the same app. So that's really good. There's tons of different things you can get with this now. You can get like proximity switches, motion sensors, temperature, I think. Everything. So I'm just going to keep adding things and automating things that make my life easier. These guys, four packs, 60 bucks, Bunnings. These guys, $25 for one inline switch. Pretty good price compared to the Philips Hue stuff. It's a bit pricey, so better value for money. These things here, I'm not even sure what wattage they were. Looking on the back cover panel, it says 13.5 watt, so not much. And they've been on here since I built the shed. They're full of water and just give up the ghost, so. Yeah, these pier lights, 100 watt, 10,000 lumens, I don't know, hopefully it doesn't light up the whole neighbourhood, but I'm okay with that. You can colour select on the back as well, there's a little press button on the back of the unit, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 Kelvin, so a different colour light, not sure which one I want to go with. No idea on the price of these, I got them through a good mate of mine, who owns electric contracting business. So I get it through his wholesale account, so shout out to him. Hooking these things up is pretty easy. When you can get to these ones, it's got that push button on there. They're pretty easy to reach. These ones have a little black button on them, which you hold down for five seconds and puts it into pairing mode, and your lights start doing a on and off pattern. So then they go on, off three times. They wait for a bit, on, off three times, wait for a bit. That's how it shows it's in pairing mode. Because these can be in a position where you might not be able to reach them, you can also turn the breaker or the switch off. So the ones out the front are hardwired, they're straight on a breaker. So you can just turn the breaker on and off three times in one second breaks, and that'll kick it into pairing mode as well. The one for the roof lights in the shed, I can just turn the light switch on and off because I'm just going to leave that on so there's power to this little Wi-Fi unit. But yeah, if you can't reach it, you can flick it into pairing mode with that. The Grid Connect app is this little one here. I've programmed them all in. Still picking up one of the Mrs. PowerPoints inside. She's got some crappy blow punked power board. I don't want to add that to this. So in here you can have scenes and you can also have automation. I already had a couple of scenes in there and I've added, I've tweaked them a little bit. So one scene I've got, probably gonna be a little bit hard to see it all because there's lights everywhere. This one called everything. Hit that. Boost. See behind me, all the lights come on. Up the top, the big flood light that's up that faces down in the shed as well, you've seen before. The mezzanine lights and these big girls up the top, everything comes on. So you can separately go through and just shut them all off. Boom, boom, switching. And then my plan is when I come into the shed every night to film for only cans, I just want to have shed lights. So I can just lift out my phone. I think I can also do it with Siri, maybe. I've got to try that yet. Voice activated. But if I just go shed lights, boom. That's the two main ones I need, just the mezzanine and the normal fluoros in the roof. 
so don't need to walk around try and hit the buttons because this one of these I had it was over in the back of the shed and if I didn't have my phone I had to come and turn it on manually I think I'm going to get a proximity switch and put it on the small roller door on this side so when I open the roller door it kicks them on that's my next idea but I don't have one of them yet the automation piece is the big piece I want to get into so I haven't really played with this too much yet but we're just going to wing it and try and set something up so you go into it you go on the plus button to add a new scene it gives you a set of conditions so you can pick what you want to do when weather changes when location changes you can schedule it and you can have when a device status changes so i think that must be off like a proximity switch window switch um temperature sensor something like that i haven't done that bit yet the one i want is when location changes so what i want to have it is when i come home so when my phone arrives home and this either connects to Wi-Fi, that triggers it, or I think it just goes off geolocation. So I think you go into the settings and you add your location as always allow. When I come home, this gets to the location within 50, 100 meters of my house, hits that proximity. The other condition is that it's after dusk, so dusk until dawn. So I don't want to trigger during the day for the floodlights on the driveway. So we'll go when location changes. You can have when leaving a place, when arriving at a place. So I want it when arriving at a place. It drops a geotag, but it's 180 meters. That's probably a bit much. I'll zoom down as small as I can get it. I think 120 is the smallest. If I come home the back road that comes through over here, I think it's gonna kick in and I'll be able to see them come on as I drive along the back. Maybe, anyway, we'll check it out. 120 seems to be the smallest radius I can get. Hit next. The next bit I want to do is run a device. I could run a scene, but it's only the one set of lights that I want to do for this one. I want it to be driveway lights. I want to count them down. And I want to have it as, I might try 10 minutes to start off with. Activation period, I don't want it to be all day, I want it to be night, so from dusk till dawn, every day, next. I'm not sure if this is going to work, I think I need the two actions. So count down 10 minutes, I don't know whether that turns them on, counts down 10 minutes and automatically turns it off, I'm not sure. So I've also made a trigger there, switch on. So hopefully it's come home, trigger, switch on, count down 10 minutes, off. But anyway, I'm no expert at this. I'm just winging it because I like this sort of stuff. Save that, start using it, yes. And now that's programmed in the background. So that's about all I can do now. Now I've got to wait till it gets dark and I'll see if I can film at work and I might try and throw the drone up in the air at night and just set it so you can see far enough away and then I'll cruise along in the car outside of that radius and then we'll see if they kick in from how far away. Righto, I'll see you back here shortly. Hopefully this works. But right, it's dark now. We're in the Mrs. Golf because it was parked in the driveway. Gonna go check out and see if this works. We're just gonna drive a little bit away, get out of range of the geolocation, and then come back and see if the lights kick in. There is an up. Boom! Just seen them come on. Works well. I'd say they are definitely bright. So that 10,000 lumens each, 20,000 lumens in total. I did want them so I can work on the driveway, so mission accomplished, I guess. Where's my gate buzzer? Boom, super bright. Shut the gate. Electric handbrake. Engine stop. Right on, let's go check them out. Yeah, I'd say they're definitely bright enough. That's pretty cool. I should be able to work on the rest of the toy hauler build out here now at night time. So it makes it easy when I'm working long hours of my day job. I can still come home, get some stuff done, and probably still film. The lighting should be good enough. A little bit more fill light around the back. And we should be right. Shed lights on. Ba boom. I don't know if I still like this one, it's a novelty wears off. It is pretty cool, I do like little gadgets. 
anyway, that's it for a start. Automated lighting, running through the app, bit of automation, a few scenes set up. Keen to get some other switches and other things and see what else I can do with it once I keep tricking it out a little bit. So if you've got any questions about it, hit me up in the comments or over on Instagram. If you've got any tips or uh, want to see me try something else with it, got any cool ideas, let me know as well. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.